wieder da. Willkommen zurück zum Interwetten European Darts Matchplay 2023. Zwei Runden Action live und präsentiert von der PDC Europe hier aus der Arena Trier. Zwei Partien stehen noch an in dieser Samstagnachmittagssession. Wir begrüßen auf der Bühne aus Tschechien einen Viertelfinalist auf der Challenge Tour. Zum zweiten Mal in seiner Karriere in der zweiten Runde eines European Tour Events. Hier kommt Viteslav Sedlar. Sein Gegner kommt aus Bradford, England. Die aktuelle Nummer 14 der Welt. Ein Premier League Finalist und der frühere Masters Champion. Wir begrüßen Rockstar Joe Carla. Well, Joe Cullen is one of four players in the field to have won this particular tournament. A little later tonight, we will see the defending champion Luke Humphreys begin his title defence. Michael Van Gerwen also here this weekend. And so too is James Wade, who took the honours in Hamburg a few years ago. 2019, when Joe Cullen won this title in Mannheim, beating MVG in the final 8-5. But you have to say, apart from a run to the semi-finals in Munich this year, He's not had a happy time of it on the European Tour so far in 2023. In fact, he's won only one of his last six matches on the European Tour, and that was a 6-5 win against Josh Payne in Sindelfingen last time out. So perhaps Joe Cullen, a man with something to prove and a balance to be redressed as far as this tournament this weekend is concerned. And furthermore, you have to say, on the evidence of what Viteslav Sedlak did yesterday, it may well be a tough assignment for him as well because Sedlak averaged over 100 in his opening win against Daniel Closer and also pinned six out of seven on his doubles. Game on. It has been an afternoon session that has produced so much. And there are still two more matches to come. A little later, we'll see the European champion Ross Smith begin his campaign against Stephen Bunting, a semi-finalist here last year, Bunting. Albeit a semi-finalist who lost heavily in the last four, but right now Cullen against Sedlak and alongside me, Rob Malarkey. For this one, it's Paul Nicholson. I'm really looking forward 57. to this game because I want to see where Joe Cullen is at. I want to see what kind of performance he can put in on Saturday because in seasons gone by, he's made Saturdays look like chicken feed. And I mean, it doesn't matter who he played. He would put in that 105 average and progress to Sunday like it was normal. Yeah. That doesn't seem to be happening at the minute, so maybe he just needs something akin to that kind of performance just 59. to get him revved up for what could be a very important summer. Well, Cullen comes here as the 
number 14 seed. He's 14th in the order of merit. He's 14th on the Pro Tour order of merit as well. My first thought, Rob, coming into today was 65. that Joe might have to put in a performance here this weekend just to maintain his seeding for events 11 and 12 on the European Tour in September. 39. At the minute, he's looking pretty healthy. But what he could do with over the next couple of European Tour events are some big runs or another victory to get his fourth title on this circuit just to make himself even more comfortable. However, yeah. this is anything play. but comfortable for Cullen. That's a continuation of what we saw yesterday from Sedlak. Yeah, that is now seven out of eight, effectively, on his uh, doubles in this tournament 58. for the weekend as a whole. One of those tournaments in September, by the way, is in Budapest, the uh, Hungarian capital, and that is where Joe Cullen will be defending a title later this year as well, one of the four titles he won in 57. 2022. Two Pro Tour titles, the Masters, of course, and that uh, Hungarian Darts Trophy as well. So, could be a big month for him, September. 60. Absolutely. And he likes winning in that time of year because three of his wins on the European Tour have come in the autumn. One in two countries, and... He's not the only winner of European Tour events in multiple countries this afternoon. The other one being Dave Chisnell. He'd won in four countries, but he's not in the tournament. He's already gone at the hands of Ryan Joyce. Who awaits the winner of this one, by the way. So that brings that uh, particular aspect of the tournament full circle. Ryan Joyce, one of these players who could just prove to be a bolt from the blue and force his way into the field for the Winter Gardens, the World Match Play, which starts later this month. Welcome to the second half of 2023, everybody. Where did the first half go? A yeah, good start from Sedlak here. Sensible starting on 19s, I feel. But can't get to the finish, so... Cullen does have that breathing space that Sedlak had in the first leg. 77. Yeah, Sedlak here this weekend as the uh, winner of the Eastern Europe qualifier that took place in Budapest at the uh, start of June. He came through five rounds of qualifying for this. The 94. best was Junior saved until 70. last, I think, because he produced a 105 average against Alexander Mazek of the Czech Republic, 5-1 in the final. 38. Cullen can't find double 16. Vincent and that average in that game was a personal best for him. His best on record. But that one yesterday of 102 plus probably felt better. Speaking of two, he's looking for two. Now, we'll talk about the whys and wherefores in a moment. But 114. Two. Do you require 32? <laughs> I mean, raised eyebrows, questionable glances, I'm not sure. I don't think it was on purpose. I don't know, I thought there was a little bit... It's hard to tell sometimes, but with, especially with players that we don't see a lot of. Anyway, Cullen has stepped in and hoovered up for good measure, so it's one apiece. 32 checkout for one all. Well, if he went for two treble 19s and double one, fair play to him, but just imagine this situation. He hits the single one going for the double and busts it, and Cullen doesn't take out that shot that he had. It made... It looked very, very silly. I've got a point to make about Joe as well. You look at him at 14 in the world and you think, is that about right? 58. For the last couple of years, you think, it just doesn't feel right to me. It feels like he should be a little bit higher, but because he's been drinking from the Johnny Clayton Cup of winning unranked big checks, yeah. that's why he's 14 and not, say, something like, Eight or nine. Yeah, if you could somehow factor in the fact 99. that he was a Premier League finalist last year, that would inflate his ranking to, I think, maybe a more accurate reflection of where he is over the last two years. Yeah. 60. But if you look at where he's ranked in the world and what he's done this year, I suppose you'd have to say he's been playing to type because a semi-final in Players' Championship 4... 41. ...semi-final... In Munich, back in April, he's got some quarterfinals in there as well, of which there have been three. You think for someone in 
just inside the top 16. That's almost what you expect them to do without being spectacular. Yeah, I mean, I mentioned at the outset just the one semi-final on the uh, European Tour this year. Just the one semi-final so far this year on the Players' Championship, but a couple of quarter-finals back-to-back -back in his most two most recent uh, Pro Tour Clyde events 94. suggest that he might be about to get back to some sort of form at a critical time of the year. He might be very much like Kim Hybrex used to be. Kim used to play all of his best darts in the autumn. You've got to play every season, whether it's spring, summer, autumn or winter. Hang on a minute, double 16. For his third Tum Plus check out of the tournament. This is going to be a really sticky wicket for Cullen. This is a very difficult game because Sedlak is swimming in confidence. Well, 116 in the opener, 110, sorry, 110 in the uh, third leg, two out of three on the doubles, and Joe Cullen has certainly got plenty to 60. think about right now. 80% for the tournament as well. He's hit eight from 10 over the course of the two matches he's been involved in. 100. He's got some support out there. It's quite the drive from Czechia to this part of Germany. I presume that he drove. 100. Um, it's, a, it's a luxury that you do have living in Central Europe. You can drive, you can get in the car, you can get on the train, whereas all the people based in the UK, they were coming through the air, weren't they? Luxembourg, not too far from here. A country that we haven't been to on the European tour. I wonder if we ever will. Squeeze it in somehow. Dress it up as the Moselle what? Open, for example. 180, 180 for Sedlak just to apply some pressure, but Joe Cullen here looking at double 12. And I tell you what, this is Joe bubbling Cullen. up nicely, isn't it? Now two apiece, 11 data for Joe contest. Cullen. And I think Joe Cullen was perhaps inspired to produce a, a nice, neat and tidy two-dart combination there, given the pressure that had been applied. Yeah, I think Sedlak's really in, enjoying this performance and enjoying the game as well. Even when Cullen took that 81 in two darts, he had a smell on his face as if to say, you know what, 80. I'm not expected to win this game, but I'm going to enjoy this as long as it lasts. And if I can get through to play against Ryan Joyce, an opportunity arises... Very similar angles of attack on the board, as you can see with Sedlak there. Very pure through the air and landing very similar to that of Cullen. 85. Yeah, it's been a good start by Sedlak, but the inevitable big question is whether he can maintain this sort of level. You perhaps fear that he might just begin to feel the pressure of playing a, a player of the calibre of Joe Cullen. And it is a big pressure to have on your shoulders when you are leading from the front. Now, OK, he's led 1-0 and 2-1 so 59. far. But to keep on doing that time and time and time again till he gets to six is... It's a daunting proposition. Sometimes the daunting thing is doing something that you've never done. 81. Said like has never been to a Sunday on a European tour, and that's not really a surprise for someone coming from a Euro Eastern European qualifier. In order to get to Sunday, you've got to be the seeded player. Well, the maximum here will be marvellous. And he's well, got one. Fifth of the match and Sedlak's fourth of the weekend. Tops here, though, for Joe, and there is the break of throw, and that's again a, a classic example of Sedlak applying the pressure, and Cullen hits him back straight away. That's amazing from Cullen. That's exactly what the rock star following want to see from him, some fire. Because he's been hit hard in this game by the Czechia player, and his response has been... Immaculate, in my opinion. Yeah, Sedlak like there was really undone by a sluggish start. I mean, he finished very well, didn't he, with that 180, but it was too little too late. I think the damage had been done in the first two visits where 100. he wasn't really able to 
impose himself in any way. Yeah, look at that conversion rate of Cullen and Sedlak, in fact, apart from leg two. Very much like what we saw from Kian van Veen earlier. Yeah, and the thing about Sedlak now is, OK, like I said, he's been leading from the front from the word go. What's the plan B like? Does he have it within him to wrestle the situation back into his favour? Well, he may well do if he keeps on throwing darts like that. I think if you're trying to build your premium confidence going into an event like the World Match Play, you want to be doing things like taking 97 out when your opponent's just hit a maximum lead tops. Or 81, as he did in yeah, the previous one. absolutely. It's a case, of, it's the old thing that The Rock used to say in, in the WWE. He'd say something like, what did you just hit? It doesn't matter what you just hit, because I'm going to hit what I've got. And it's a confidence-boosting scenario that if he can use, then Cullen... May go under the radar if he gets a decent draw in Blackpool, or indeed here this weekend. Well, Sedlak got down to a finish first in this leg, but Cullen's waiting in the wings on 36. However, Sedlak may have other ideas. Look at this, double eight is the target for an instant break back and to get back on terms at three apiece. Just inside. Joey required 36. Feels like Cullen's been under pressure in this game since the very first visit. But he's got a 4-2 lead. Not just brilliant when he gets his chances. But taking full advantage of the narrow miss of Sedlak there in leg six. Well, Joe Cullen has won the last three legs in 38 darts. In the first two of those three legs, it came on the back of a big visit from Sedlak. That was on the back of a missed dart at double eight for a 1-3-6 checkout for Sedlak. So Joe Cullen is really having to dig deep in this one. I'll tell you what we are seeing today from the seeded players. It's those three-leg bursts in under 40 darts. We saw it from Josh Rock. He did it in 39 with three consecutive 13s. Then we saw from Aspinall a 36 dart burst. And he mentioned the 38 dart burst we've just seen from Cullen. If you want to be a top-level dart player doing what these superstars do, you've got to be able to have that in the locker. Having a 45-dart burst used to be good. The equivalent of winning a set of darts in 100 average. That's old hat now. You've got to be able to do it in under 40. Yeah. 121. Yeah. You know, four visits is almost like the required, isn't it? Cullen will be looking at 105 plus just to give Vitislav something to think about. There we see again another big visit from Sedlak. 105. Vitislav, you've acquired 36. Yeah, a little tap on the desk for that uh, last start from Joe Cullen as well. Gets himself down to a finish if he gets the opportunity. And he may well get the opportunity as well. Sedlak labouring on double 18. Yeah. No score. And once again, Joey the miss starts at double may well prove costly. Hang on. Hang on. Oh, that looked good in the air. Everybody thought that was going. Even Joe did. Well, he may well get another chance here because Sedlak was not convincing on his previous Game attempts, but that's more like it. Flag. Vitislav and uh, a little nod there Edlund towards the crowd. And this match, well, once again, in keeping with the afternoon session as a whole, delivery. It's been such a great afternoon. Yeah. Tonight, if it tops it, it'll be something to see from 7 o'clock local time. But two words that really do signify what we've seen in the first seven legs of this contest. Fine margins. Cullen takes that 170 60. out. He's on Dream Street. But now, he's still in a battle. Four perfect darts. And the dream dies once again on the European Tour for the hopes of a nine-darter. Great to see a nine-darter from anybody. Like Dave Chisnell, who gets them all the time. Or MVG. But I'd like somebody 97. else to get one. Somebody who hasn't had a Euro to a nine-darter and... Have a celebration, somewhat like Dean Wynn Stanley at, <laughs> at the World Championship, where he just bolted off the stage against Vincent van der Voort. I want to see something like that. Or maybe some, some kind of stranger nine-darter. He talked about it yesterday with 
Ricardo Pietrescu hitting a 180 to start, then looking 44. for a 171, and Dan stipulated that he might go three balls for the 150. <laughs> Cullen. 55. Despite not finding a trouble there, in control of this leg as well on throw. Now, Sedlak's feature today has been big visits at this stage of the leg, where Cullen's made his move, he's in position, and once again, he's done it there. He's applied, he's got down to a finish. It's something to work with. Cullen looking at 89 here, so treble 19 for double 16. Oh. Well, that's an absolute dagger in the heart of Viteslav Sedlak. And well, he smiles and can only acknowledge what was a timely intervention there from Joe Cullen. Brilliant stuff. Do you know what? I think Sedlak in this game has been like a wasp at a picnic. He's been annoying to Cullen. But the size of Joe Cullen's electronic swatting racket. 100. He's hitting all the marks. It's a 98 average, just about, but it's... And I'm not overselling this. 134. It's an amazing 98 yeah. average. Yeah, just that 20 dart leg in the uh, second leg of the match blotting the copybook for Joe Cullen so far today. Five 100. from eight on his uh, double so far. Numbers that almost forced me to lose my voice momentarily there, Paul, as well. <laughs> oh, I know a thing or two about losing your voice in the commentary box, getting a bit excited. Nothing wrong with that. Well, we love what we do, we love what we watch, and 60. all of these people here this afternoon, I'm sure a few of them are going to stick around for tonight where we've got some rather remarkable stuff coming your way. Do I even need to mention that Michael van Gerwen's playing Raymond van Barneveld in the El Clasico of modern day darts? Michael Smith against Keen Barry, that'll be slow. Only joking. Schindler against Rids. Looking Joey forward to that one. Is this the end of this match though? It may well be. Double 16. Sorry, double Go 14 for Joe Cullen. And Joe Cullen wraps it up with a 6-3 win, but my word, he was made to work hard for that one in places. Vitezlav Sedlak with a good indication of what he can do. In the end, Cullen was just a little bit too good and produced the telling moments at just the right time. An average in the end of 100.54, two tumblers checkouts and six out of nine on the doubles as well. Joe Cullen through to face Ryan Joyce in the third round tomorrow. He wins by six legs to three.